The vibration of change, that magical place where life shifts from struggle to ease, from stagnation to forward movement, from old ways of being to new ways of becoming. Yes, it can seem rather elusive to get there, but when you are in it, you feel it down to your very core, and it can positively affect everything in your life, from your relationships to your health and well-being, from your career path to your abundance, from the quality of your inner connection to the fullness of your self-expression. Here on The Christine Uptrich Show, we explore ways to get into that vibration of change with experts in the fields of consciousness, psychology, spirituality, health, healing, and science. Are you ready to step into your vibration of change? Welcome. So glad to have you here, whether you're listening live in the Seattle area on 1150 AM KKNW, live anywhere around the world on Transformation Talk Radio, or after the fact on one of the 50 different places this ends up, including on ChristineUpchurch.com, whenever and wherever you're, you're joining us from. We're so grateful you're here. And we are going to be talking about an important topic for everybody. We're going to be talking about success. I know that we all want success in one area of our life or another. But before I get into that and who our guest is today, I want to say hello to the man behind all the technology who allows you to hear these wonderful conversations, Mr. Benny Mathers. Hey, Benny. Hi, Christine. Welcome back. Uh, I'm feeling fairly successful for today, and I'm looking forward to the show. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because I'm going through a stage where I've, I've, like, I'm expanding in a variety of directions. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I've got I'm to wrangle you from in, time to time. I, I know. <laughs> it happens. I'm just saying it happens. And, and, I'm, and I'm stepping into further success in certain areas, mm -hmm. being a little overwhelmed. So I need this today about, about how to, like, continue to be successful when you're truly expanding. Well, don't forget to breathe because that's number one. Yeah, and I bet you anything, that's one of the suggestions uh -huh. in our guest's book. And our <laughs> guest today is G. Brian Benson. He goes by Brian, and he is, gosh, <laughs> listen to this. He's an author, a best-selling author, an actor, a TEDx speaker, a four-time Ironman triathlete, and he has sort of gone on his own personal journey where he was running a very successful uh, family business, and he opted to shift his direction. A man after my own heart because I went from statistician to healer. So it's, it takes a lot of guts to, to go from a comfortable situation to the unknown because your soul is calling, and this man has done it. Um, he's a life coach, a radio personality, a filmmaker, and he knows the value of trusting intuition, and he wants to share his own personal journey of self growth, discovery, and accomplish accomplishment to help others reconnect with their own personal truths to live an authentic life. And he is the author of several books, including Habits for Success, Inspired Ideas to Help You Soar, Create Your Foundation of Happiness, Balance, and Fulfillment. I'd like to welcome our guest today, Brian Benson. Hey, Brian. Hey, Christine. Good morning. So glad to have you here today. You know, uh, I'm... I'm fascinated by your story because you know there aren't a lot of people who really shift direction pretty significantly. I was one of those people. You're another one of those people. Tell us a little bit about your journey away from a comfortable situation, a successful in many people's eyes situation into the unknown. Well, okay, 10 years ago, I was running my family's business. We had a golf center, uh, which was like a uh, driving range, a retail store, and a nine-hole par three course in Salem, Oregon. And, you know, I grew up working there. It was my first job in seventh grade. I'd go out there and pick up the range balls in a, you know, old John Deere lawnmower with a cage made out of chicken wire to protect me from the balls. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, you know, I just, I grew up there. And so um, after running it for 11 years, I just started feeling like, I was done growing, and I felt like um, I was supposed to do something else with my life. You know, I had this, I felt like I had this gift inside of me that wanted to come out, but I didn't know what it was, but I knew that I needed to try to release it. So mm -hmm. I had a chat with my dad, and luckily he was, he was, you know, he just wanted me to be happy, so he was understanding, and so we ended up deciding to sell it. And, uh, you know, although I really wanted to hit the road, you know, immediately, I had to wait around a year because we, you know, had to go through the process of listing and, and uh, sure. finding a buyer. And right. That, you know, so, but it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. So, that extra year. 
So when you felt like you were you wanted something more, what were some of the signs and symptoms of your experience of that? Because I think that there are many people who are there and they're feeling kind of uncomfortable and they really aren't necessarily recognizing that it's time for them to shift their career, for instance, or a relationship for that matter. Yeah, you know, I think it's just, it, 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 it's kind of hard to describe because I think it kind of can hit everybody a little differently. But uh-huh. for me, it was just this gnawing, just, you know, this gnawing inside of me that just felt like, you know, I'm done here. And and luckily, I've always tried to be the best version of myself and, and, and uh, pursued, you know, self-awareness and self-growth. And so I just, it wasn't that hard of a decision for me. I mean, I felt a little guilty initially just because I felt like, you know, here he was giving me this great opportunity. However, it just, it wasn't for me, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I, you know, I also kind of, it's probably no coincidence. I started re, how do I say this? Re-remembering kind of maybe more parts of my spiritual nature. I, I started getting reacquainted with some books, you know, uh, Gary Zukov and uh-huh. some Wayne Dyer stuff and, and started kind of meditating again. And, and that helped me, um, probably allow my intuition to come through stronger and, and uh, be more confident in the decision. Mm-hmm. So you heard your soul calling a little bit better and you developed the confidence to act upon it, sounds like. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so your, your book is called Habits for Success. I'd like you to yeah. define for our listeners what you mean by success. <laughs> well, that, that has changed for me and it's almost changing daily. Um, I think initially, you know, I and, and probably many people uh, are taught or, you know, modeled to believe that success is, you know, making a lot of money and having a prestigious job or what have you, you know. Right. And, and for me, I don't know if it was necessarily that, but but once, you know, I didn't really plan on doing anything that I'm doing now. I really had no idea what I was going to do with my life. My first book accidentally happened. Uh, during that last year of being at the business, and I self-published it. And so when that came out, um, it it didn't sell a whole lot because I didn't know how to market it. Number one, and number uh-huh. two, I was I was afraid to speak in front of people. Oh, but yeah. it won a couple, yeah, won a couple of awards. And so I knew that if I was gonna want to share this message, I needed to 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 figure out how to overcome that fear. But um, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit. I think. For, what was the question again? Sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> no, no. So h- h- how do we define success? How do you yes, define yes, success? Yes. Because I, I, I know it means something different to everybody, and yes. I'm, I'm curious what so, it means for you. Well, yeah, so what I was, well, let me just say one more thing. When I was three, I told my mom I was put here to inspire people, mm-hmm. and she reminded me not too long ago. And so I think internally I knew that my life's mission was to maybe do what I'm doing currently. Right. So when that first book came out, my idea of success was being this, multi-million copy book best-selling author and sure. you know get up there and just do what Wayne Dyer was doing and all that kind of stuff and uh-huh. and uh and as I went through the process of self-growth and stuff and getting beat down a little bit and not being ready for some of my my dreams you know I needed some more seasoning I I, I kept getting that what is success idea of success kind of um kept altering for me so now anymore I, I really there's so many different ways that we can be successful and for me I really think that uh, the more that we can really learn how to love and accept ourselves, mm. I think is the ultimate goal of, of what truly is success. Because once we can do that, everything else falls into place. Yeah. And I, I think in terms of loving myself, and part of loving myself means uh, fulfilling what feels like an authentic journey. And that, that means expanding in certain ways, sharing in certain mm-hmm. ways, connecting in certain ways. And yes. it's it's sometimes surprising to me what direction that goes, but it's it's really about being true to my soul's calling, if you will, or to my authentic journey. Yes, you know, I mean, it's just every day we're doing successful things. We just don't we aren't really really paying attention to it. You know, I mean, just just opening ourselves up and being vulnerable in different situations, or stepping out of our comfort zone, or just being a, uh, the best parent you can be, or what have you. I mean, those those are all success. Yeah, and, you know, and. Mm-hmm. And and some days I think just getting through the day and checking a couple yes. things off the list and staying reasonably balanced <laughs> is <out> success. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. Especially during Mercury retrograde. Yes, <laughs> yes. Right. I I lost my kids and I lost our luggage on a trip oh. on Mercury retrograde. It eventually arrived, but yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. 
it can be challenging. Right, right. So mine, it's, it's you know, it's continually changing, and, and I think for the better, my, my idea was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. can you offer us, a, a like, one of the, the tips? Like you've got a, you know, your chapters are basically tips for creating success. Um, what's one of those before we go to break? Yeah, I mean, there's 48 chapters. There's so many different things, you know, but for me, I think some of the most important ones were, were the intuition and then the stepping out of the comfort zone. Yeah, let's talk about the comfort zone because that's an yeah. interesting one. We all want to feel at ease. We all want to feel comfortable. Why should we step out of the comfort zone? Well, for me, once I began to do that, everything opened up for me. And I started, you know, realizing I had gifts that I had no idea were inside of me. So once that first book came out in 2009, and I forced myself to, to, to learn how to begin to be comfortable in front of folks. I, I did all kinds of things. And it was not easy, but I, I did a couple of community college speech classes. I took Toastmasters for a little while. I mm-hmm. hired someone to, co- yeah, to co-host an internet radio show with me who's been doing it. Right. I created an interactive workshop, and I thought I was being clever since I wouldn't have to talk the whole time, but I found <laughs> out it actually worked out better that way. Uh-huh. People could share. Right. I took, I took an acting class. I just, you know, I, I, you know, all these things that I did, they led to other things. I just kept following my little intuitive breadcrumbs and one thing led to another. And I started just really feeling alive and empowered. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it just, I just kept following the, following that trail. And, Mm -hmm. you know, like I said, I did not plan on writing or acting or any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I remember opened itself up for me. You know, I, I acted in my twenties in community theater and I'd taken some acting classes in college, but, um, and I felt pretty comfortable on stage then. But when I had to get up on stage as myself, sharing something from my own life, from my professional life, for two minutes, I remember I used to, like, my, my palms would sweat. I'd feel like somebody was strangling me. And then eventually I would be teaching for four days in a row on stage and then wow. and now speaking on radio. But I, I definitely had to get out of my own comfort zone. And it was this physiological reaction saying, don't do this, don't do this. And yet... I felt this motivation, and I, of course, I had some good support. People saying that was great. You know, keep doing that. We want to get you up on yeah. stage more. So, it's it's really hard to do it, but sometimes we're just compelled because our soul is saying it's time to do it. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, I kind of felt like I knew what my life's mission was, and I feel like I have an idea of where it's headed. However, I needed to go through all of that stuff just to solidify my own being and and really i mean ultimately the last 10 years yes i'm blessed and i've had a lot of accomplishments but i'm still working on learning how to love and accept myself like everybody else yeah, join, and join the humanity, more I, yes <laughs> yeah the more that i do that though i find the easier it is to do those things that i want here because uh-huh. probably i wasn't feeling like i was worthy or good enough to do those right right This is fascinating, and there are lots more tips from Brian. So stay tuned for more about Habits for Success. Learn to live in the light and unveil the authentic you with a time of healing radio with me, Felistiana, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in every third Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific as I help listeners understand sacred fusion energy and how to connect to the spirit that fuels the very life we live. Explore the journey of spiritual transcendence and ultimately discover the path to peace, love, purpose and wholeness. For more information, visit a timeofhealing.com. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. What does the word healing mean? Many think that healing merely means eliminating symptoms. However, based on my many years as a healer, I have a much broader perspective on the word. Healing can manifest in a variety of ways, including having physical problems resolved, becoming more emotionally centered, experiencing better relationships, gaining greater clarity, and feeling more spiritually connected. True healing always includes some level of transformation. Whatever form healing takes, there is one commonality, an improvement in quality of life. To me, the highest form of healing goes beyond aligning with wellness. It comes from recognizing our soul's voice and allowing it to speak through us. 
And in that sense, don't we all yearn to heal into our wholeness? Please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Are you ready to finally feel empowered and knowledgeable in your political stance? Let Marsha Padilla Goad educate you on exactly how important grassroots advocacy is in a relatable way to all perspectives. Tune in to Grassroots Advocacy Radio with Marsha every first Tuesday of the month at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Visit DynamicsInPublicAffairs.com. What is holding you back from living the life you are meant to live? Why is it vital to believe in something bigger than yourself? Are you in physical or emotional pain? Tune in monthly to Vibrant Purposeful Living. Awaken the vibrant life within you with Lou Paradise and Dr. Pat on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Lou's passion is to help everyone experience positive solutions for life. Find out more about Lou with Vibrant Purposeful Living at LouParadise.com. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk Radio. Show here on 1150 AM KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. You know, Brian, um, I know you've got a whole lot of tips about how each of us can move forward towards success. Um, you were talking about stepping out of our comfort zone, uh, comfort zone, which I have had to do multiple times, including stepping into radio. I sort yeah. of came into radio kicking and screaming about seven years ago. <laughs> um, I mean, I, you know, I was a guest on radio shows, but like hosting, that was a whole other thing. She was a handful. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Benny likes to give me a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so, so what are some other suggestions? Mm. Well, uh, I, I really am a big proponent of it, that it's okay to fail. Yeah. You know, um, obviously most people don't think that it's okay to fail, and there's part of us that likes to kind of try to control things, control things, and be, be, be a perfectionist. And I believe me, I've I, I fall into that at times. But yeah, I do too. Yeah, I mean, I think failing it can do so much for us. It can build Such character. As. Well, you know, I think it builds character. I think it teaches us maybe to be more empathetic. I think it can make us humble. Mm-hmm. Um, I think an important thing is that it really forces us to maybe dig deeper and, and hone what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it can teach us a new way to do things right. that might us, be better. Teaches us what not to do or what doesn't exactly. work. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, it, it ultimately, I think it, it, it can lead us to new opportunities. I mean, maybe something wasn't meant to succeed and it's a blessing yeah. in disguise. Right. Or the timing um, wasn't right. <clears throat> or the timing wasn't right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think, you know, in a weird way, it, it, I don't think we ever want to really get used to failing. However, if we're not afraid to fail, it can free us up. Yeah. And that, so like some people that really, don't do things because they're afraid of that in the first place. Yeah. And that relates to a whole lot of attachment to outcome. How can yep. attachment to outcome get in our way of being successful? Uh, it's gotten in my way a lot. Um, I, whenever I used to release a project, whether it's a short film or a book or whatever, since I have an idea where I feel like I'm headed, I would maybe put my put a little too much expectation in the project. And, and you know, I enjoy the process of creating them, but but maybe didn't trust in the process that they were supposed to get where they were supposed to get, if that makes sense. And uh-huh. and so when something came out and didn't quite reach those expectations that I put on it, I'd be depressed for a while, mm-hmm. and it really bummed me out. Right. So, you know, when I think, Brian, about detaching from outcome, probably the the place where I have been the most challenged has uh, been within the context of parenting. 
Um, mm. I've got two adult kids. One's 24. The other is 18. And they're doing great in their own ways. And yet um, s- watching them, say, go down a certain route that, that feel where I feel like, okay, it's somehow related to me or it's related to the dysfunctional mm. relationship I was in or um, it's not turning out the way I'd hoped for them. They don't love themselves the way, you know, what, whatever it is. Yeah. It's like yeah. I have great attachment to outcome and I've had to work really hard to let go and say their path, their path. And I'm here if they need me. That that letting go is probably the most difficult within parenting, wouldn't you just say? You're, you're a father, right? Yeah, my son's 25. And mm-hmm. there was a part of me that um, I wasn't, I mean, I, I, I didn't see him a whole lot from when he was like three to 14. Uh-huh. And I, maybe five or six times a year. And uh, he lived a ways away. And uh, there was a part of me that we were reconnected after I left the family business. I moved down to northern Nevada, and he was in northern California, really close by. So I was there while he was in high school, and we kind of began to reconnect and, and, and all that. But I had a lot of guilt. And so, you know, mm-hmm. there's a part of me that it, I've really had to work on that. And, and it's it's gotten to a good place. I mean, he's a good kid. And, you know, he's very stubborn. And mm-hmm. there's a part of him that I feel he kind of, I think, needs to make – he knows this himself, and he needs to kind of learn the mistakes himself. You know, right. I, I, I'll try to kind of guide him, but sometimes kids just don't want to hear from the parents. And so ultimately, all I really try to do is just let him know he's loved and just try to be a good example. Mm-hmm. And, oh, and, that's a good and part. They, a good, good one. And let then the just love let go. An example, yeah. 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 So, um, but I do think that that practice, I think, you know, as, as parents, we have to let go along the way. We let go of... You know, our little babies when they become toddlers and our toddlers when they become, you know, school age children. I mean, it, it, there, there are aspects of, of letting go where we get, as parents, we get a lot of practice. And for you, you know, and, and, and for me, too, to a certain degree, it was, it was like, okay, well, I'm no longer seeing my kids all the time when I got divorced. Then, you know, letting go and letting go. So how can that practice serve us within the context of success? Well... You know, like I said, I think if you just, if you, if you just, I think if you can really learn how to just enjoy the process, and I mean, it's, it's you know, it's so cliche, just, it's, it's all about the journey and not the destination. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really true. Right. And, you know, I've, I've learned that myself. And, and I, you know, after I kind of came to that realization, finally, when I released my first kid's book a couple of years ago, and it, it did well initially for the first couple of days, hit number one in its category. It was, that was great. And, but yet, I don't know, I just, I, I don't know what I was expecting, and I just felt really depressed for that following week, and I, I just decided then and there that if it wasn't going to be fun anymore, I'm not going to do it. And yeah. so I really tried to consciously just enjoy the creative process and be proud of what I was doing and celebrate those wins when they happened. Because mm-hmm. I wasn't before, I would just go on to the next thing and the next thing. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and, and for yeah. listeners who have never written a book, and I'm in the process of writing one, I know you've written several it is so much work. Um, <laughs> it is so much work. It's an intense, it's, it's, you're, you're going through this birthing process of yeah. this creation that's a part of yourself, and you've got to, like, you know, look at it zillions of times to make sure it's reflecting what you're saying and, you know, what you really want to say and that it's correct grammar and, and, and punctuation and, uh, you know, and it's going to get your point across. So it's uh, yeah. it's pretty intense. Yeah, yeah, and, and depending on what you're writing about, it really uh, forces you to take a look at your own life and stuff. I mean, yes. obviously, I write because I'm writing self help, and you know, I try to share my experiences and stuff. So it really, um, you know, it, it can be scary, but it also can be liberating. Mm-hmm. And uh, but you're right; it's it's a lot of work. It's a yeah. lot. It's a big um, undertaking and commitment. Right, and um, I know that. Jack Canfield has said this, and I'm not sure who originally said this, but he says that you'll you'll make a lot more money talking about your book than you'll ever make from your book. You know that. Yes. That, and and so we, I think that a lot of authors, particularly new authors, think uh, this is the way I'm going to support myself <laughs> is through my books, and that uh-huh. rarely happens. Right, right. Unless some, you know, somebody's a, a a big name, a celebrity, or whatever, and they are able to, you know get a big book deal or whatever and have, you know, a million copies sold. Sure. Most of us are kind of scratching and crawling, crawling just to get it out there. And, but yeah, he's absolutely right. Um, 
yeah. the, the speaking and the leveraging of the other things is where I think uh, an author or a writer can make, uh, you know, a living. Mm -hmm. And it really is about getting the message out, and and a lot of yep. people want to hear about it. They want to see somebody presenting about it. Um, they want to, you know, experience the information by interacting with the authors. So it makes yeah. sense, but it's, it, it's, I, I get how when you get through it, the creation of a book and you're like, wait a minute, you know, and it's not turning into the bestseller I hoped it would, or the, the New York <laughs> times bestseller I hoped it would, or whatever. Um, it can be a little frustrating. I, I, I've, I've, yep. I've sat in that puddle a few times. <laughs> <laughs> So what are some other tips for success? Gosh, um, I think, you know, uh, boldly saying yes, you know, that, mm, yeah. you know, there's, there's just say no is also another one. I mean, you know, but, but for, the, for the yes, you know, I think saying yes can really do a lot for us. Um, I think it can set an intention of success. Um, it can lead us into a positive flow of momentum. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, you know, I just kept saying yes to these ideas that were coming to me, even though they didn't really make sense, but yet it, they, they just kept moving me forward and showing me all these aspects of myself that I didn't know were there. Uh -huh. And I, I started, you know, like I mentioned earlier, feeling empowered and alive and creative and, and, uh, you know, I think I've grown so much. By saying yes, uh -huh. um, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed that I, I had the courage to, to do that. And, of course, that probably means you've said yes to some things that you've failed at, too, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, excuse me, I'm getting a spam call. That's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go to a quick break. and, and Perfect um, timing for us, too. Yeah. It, it's, it's great timing. Well, it's never great timing for a spam call, but it it works for us right now. So stay tuned for more about Habits for Success with G. Brian Benson. Are you ready for unfiltered gratitude, unfiltered frequency, and unfiltered creation? Then don't miss Mike Murphy Unfiltered on TransformationTalkRadio.com Thursday from 12 to 2 Pacific Time as Mike Murphy and a cast of powerful guests discuss and demonstrate the principles and practices of the creation frequency. Tune in to unleash the power of your mind. Open the immense energy of the heart to manifest an awesome life filled with true health, wealth, confidence, gratitude, and joy. Unfiltered truth and unfiltered frequency to uncover and let go of limiting beliefs and access your powerful intentions that resonate out into the universe with Mike Murphy Unfiltered. For more information on Mike and his work, visit his website at MikeMurphyUnfiltered.com. Imagine that you can create anything you choose. Literally, imagine it. Join us to explore the neuroscience of imagination, intention, and clear speak. Tune in to Clear Speak Talk Radio with Dr. Ned Wolf on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Every fourth Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, as she explores how your inner dialogue, your conversations, and the words you choose to use can help set goals you keep, achieve greater health and resources, and feel the ease and flow of loving your life. For more information, visit JeanetteWolf.com. What is a brilliant culture, and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. As a former research statistician, my scientific background is what many would call sensible. For more than a decade now, I have been working in the field of energy medicine, facilitating sessions and teaching around the world. People from the mainstream often ask me, how did a sensible woman like you end up working in such an alternative field? 
Implicit in their question is the underlying assumption that the field of subtle energy, such as energy healing and intuition, isn't sensible. But I believe it is very sensible. Even scientists are able to measure aspects of this. Approaching life from an energetic perspective brings us new opportunity for healing and transformation. And from a practical standpoint, even if you can't rationally explain how something works, if you experience a shift from it, then doesn't it make it pretty sensible? Please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. We're here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm talking today to G. Brian Benson. He's an award-winning author, an actor, four times Ironman triathlete, and he's the author of several books, including Habits for Success, Inspired Ideas to Help You Soar. Now, there are a lot of ideas in here, and Brian, I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> what, what do you think most people have a hard time with that interferes with their becoming successful? Wow, that's a great question. I think one of the things is something that we just talked about uh, on the last uh, uh, section was the stepping out of our comfort zone part. Right. You know, I think yeah. that, that's, um, you know, that can be a hard thing for folks. Um, what else? Gosh, you know, oh, the, the, be easy, being easy on yourself. I think a lot of us really uh, it's easy for us to beat ourselves up, whether it's through negative self-talk or, or just, um, you know, that just not, uh, I don't know, seeking perfection, over pushing. Right. I mean, and, and I've fallen into all of those categories, believe me. But, okay, but so this is a I, really important one mm-hmm. that you're talking about right now because I think yeah. that for many of us in our in this culture in the United States, at least, we think that we have to be disciplined and we have to be hard on ourselves and we have to demand perfection in order to get anywhere near success. And what you're saying is a little bit different than that. Well, yeah. I mean, I think, gosh, I, at least I know for myself, um, I needed to release some of that because it was just, it was overwhelming and it just caused me to really not enjoy my process. And, mm-hmm. and even though I was doing a lot of really amazing things, I just had this this part of me that I don't know if it was because I wasn't feeling, you know, completely worthy or, you know, accepted myself that I, I felt like I needed to prove something or, or what, but it just, it was, it was not, it didn't make things enjoyable. And I know, you know, that we're, you know, taught uh, to, 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 you know, work hard and all that kind of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with working hard, but mm-hmm. I think anymore, I just try to work smarter and just, 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 enjoy myself and just, you know, love myself through the whole process. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like your, what we call work ethic has changed over the years? Yeah, it's, it's still kind of changing. Um, I still work very hard and I'm very driven, but yet, uh, most of the time when I'm pushing, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. And, and before, you know, those times when I was feeling like that, I would still push and I would never like give myself permission to take a break. Right. And, and, and so here I would be sitting there trying to make something happen, but it wouldn't. So I might as well just take a day or two off and go take a day trip or something because nothing was going to happen anyways. And I found the more that I did that and I, and I, I'm really good at, you know, for the most part staying in balance, you know, I'll try mm-hmm. to get some exercise every day and get into nature and that helps me, but really shutting my brain off from the process for a little while, but there was a couple of days or even giving myself a week, it, I would come back rejuvenated and my cup would be refilled mm-hmm. and I would be so much more creative and stuff would just pour out of me uh-huh. in, in just an amazingly short amount of time yeah. instead of just sitting there grinding, trying to, you know, force myself to be, <laughs> to be creative. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, that, that was a huge, huge lesson for me to be able to give myself permission to, 
to back off when, when I intuitively felt like I needed to. I, I've been fascinated over the years that when I go on vacation, something mm-hmm. magically opens up for me one way or another. Um, it yeah. might be, you know, getting invited onto a show that I always wanted to be on, but I didn't think I could, could get on it. Or it will have been like, you know, suddenly more clients are calling or um, I hear from like what happened this last vacation. Um, I started to hear from all sorts of people um, in the area I was at. It was interesting. It's like there are all these people mm. doing friend requests from and they lived in Arizona. And one of them was from Idaho, but she had taken a class from me when I was in Arizona. And she was mm. reaching out to, to tell me how much what I taught her had changed her life. And so it was like mm. this this really surprising kind of situation. And that was all when I was letting go on vacation. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so important. Um, a couple of years ago, I was just really just at wit's end and feeling like I needed a break. And, and I just got in my car and <laughs> drove around the Southwest for 10 days. Good for you. And it was awesome. You know, I hit all the great spots, Sedona, Grand Canyon, and uh-huh. spent some time up in Colorado. And, and uh, you know, I just came back totally refreshed and, and just ready to go at it again and, and had some new ideas. And, you know, it just, yeah, nature's perfection for me, and it really just opens up my channels. Mm-hmm. It, it's interesting because one of the things that I talk about relating to nature is nature is is in that vibration of presence. It's it it it, it is yeah. you know what is. It's not thinking about the future. It's not you know having anxiety about the future. It's not worrying about what happened in the past. It's very very present, and so that creates that vibration. So when when we're in that, it allows us to just sort of become centered with what is, which is a magical mm-hmm. place for creation and, and positive change. Um, yeah. But it is, it's, a, it's very powerful to be in nature. So yeah. you talk about, you know, maintaining balance. You talked about getting some exercise. You talked about, um, you mm-hmm. know, giving yourself a break, being in nature. Is there anything else that you think is important for um, staying in balance? Well, I mean, there's a ton of things. You know, I don't think it's any accident that my first book was on a whole bunch of different ways to stay in balance 10 years ago because it gave me the education and the self-awareness to know what kept me in balance and what threw me out of balance. And it's really kind of been a huge part of my foundation since. You know what I mean? Enabling uh-huh. me to kind of just stay, stay, stay on task and, and uh, live proactively instead of reactively. I think that's the most important thing. But, but it also just you know, incorporating all those different ways to stay in balance is just to let my intuition to, you know, continue to come through strongly. But, you know, food, food is huge. Mm -hmm. Um, What we put into our bodies makes a big difference on how we're going to feel. My original five that that I I, I actually wrote these down when I was working at the family business because I was feeling out of balance one day. And it was make sure I was drinking enough water, Uh which is, this sneaks up on us. That that sneaks up on us. It's huge. Um, make sure I was getting some daily exercise, make sure that I was getting enough sleep. Uh-huh, and that's another big one. Yep. If I don't get enough sleep, everything else kind of just falls to the wayside. Yeah. So um, those three plus make sure that I was allowing myself to have some alone time every day. Oh, yeah, that's yep. another good one. Yep, and then make sure that I was allowing myself to be creative every day. And at that time, um, playing guitar was my way of being creative. I hadn't started writing or doing anything else then. Mm-hmm. And so just, you know, having that help me through that period, that's when my intuition, you know, screamed, expand the list. And that's when I wrote my first book, just because of that experience. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, there's lots of different things we can do. Um, now, and you, actually, a lot of the habits, I think, are ways that will help us stay in balance as well, too, mm-hmm. that I write about. So several times you've talked about um, your intuition. How do we learn to, first of all, discern our intuition and secondly learn to trust it gosh that's this is always a, a little bit of a tough question for me to answer because i think it hits everybody a little bit differently mm-hmm. but for me it was just kind of a an all systems go type feeling if i got you know i thought about something and it just it just felt right to step into it so when you say it felt right, so are you talking about emotionally? Are you talking about physically? Give it, give us some examples of, of the specific yeah. sense of it. Well, for for example, I think one of the first things that I remember kind of following my intuition, this is crazy, way back in the late 70s, 
I found this magazine. I love baseball and, and history and stuff. And I found this magazine that had all these old baseball players' addresses in it. Uh-huh. And I just just knew I got to write these guys. And they, they played in the 1920s and 30s and 40s. And so I just sent out probably 100 different letters. And I started getting letters back. And it was just like potentially Christmas every day for me. And it just, uh-huh. I don't know, it's just such a cool experience for me to be able to connect with these guys. Um, it just, I mean, I don't know if that's the greatest example. I also really felt an overpowering urge to get into triathlon, Mm -hmm. um, due to my intuition, intuition. I even wrote a poem like two years before I did my first Ironman about finishing one. So it just, I don't, it was almost like I manifested it to happen, but, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had a knee injury and a couple of buddies of mine, I did a short race, uh, summer before when I was in college. And this is like when triathlons are still fairly new. And I just, I just knew that I need to, I need to make that a goal to get my body healthy and my knee right and mm-hmm. do one. Uh-huh. And I did, and I did four, five that summer, and I did ten the next year, and I wow. did. I ended up doing over fifty races, including the four Ironman. But it just became such a part of my life and a lifestyle, and really just made me feel alive and empowered. So that was another time that I just I knew that I was supposed to step into something. Mm-hmm. And that and- was before all this other stuff. And for me, sometimes the the knowingness um, is, you know, so sometimes it's just kind of like this this download. And typically, mm-hmm. my body will respond with this just a sense of ease or giddiness, like like I'm inspired mm. or I feel at peace with this. Um, whereas if yeah. something's not quite right, you know, I might feel a tightness in my my gut or my throat. Um, and, mm. you know, or, or I just feel a, a sense of, of agitation or tension. So I will often feel these things in my body, you know, mm. sometimes after the download of the knowingness. Um, but it, it, there, yeah. there are definitely telltale signs. For sure. And, you know, and, and you're absolutely, I, for some reason, I don't feel that necessarily in my body. Uh-huh. I just, it's like a, just a, a knowing or something. And I know there's times when I don't feel, you know, like it's, like something I maybe should do, but then how does it feel? I just, for me, it's just kind of like, yeah, it's a little bit of a attention feeling and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. And but, I think uh, that yeah. sometimes what happens is when we start to follow through, then doors will open, synchronicities will occur, um, and it's it helps to validate because there's signs all around us, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I know you talk about that in your book too. Um, I mean, yeah, for me, I always kind of knew I was on the right track if something felt a little bit scary as well as exciting. Uh-huh. Oh, that's that's a good that's a good description. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we have to go to another quick break, but um, when we return, you'll learn how you can connect with Brian, and we'll get some more tidbits of of how to reach for success. Stay tuned. I'm Peggy Snow with another Stellar Reflections Minute. Presence, or what we think of as being fully in the moment, is a key element in the process of healing work. As a practitioner facilitating a session, genuine presence takes us out of our heads where we tend to decide what is and maybe what should be for the client and moves us into direct experience where we're available to witness the person in their wholeness. In this receptive realm, Our senses are heightened and expanded, allowing us to perceive what's seeking to unfold and to interact in the moment. There's something profoundly powerful that happens when healing is approached in this simple, pure way. Balance can be restored and healing can take place on multiple levels. If you'd like more information about the services we offer at Stellar Reflections, visit us at StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999. Nine 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 eight three six. Have you lost a loved one and would desperately love a sign to prove that they are okay? Here's a tip for you. Be curious. Keep an open mind about everything. The proof will come from the most unlikely places. The messages promise to challenge your current beliefs in what you've been taught. Accept and appreciate all, no matter where they come from. I'm Angie Corbett Kuiper. I would love for you to share your signs from beyond on my closed Facebook page, Beyond Grief. 
Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to transformationradio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. Welcome back. We are talking to Brian Benson. And Brian, before we go any further, um, I want to clarify for our listeners that if you're looking for any of his books, it's G period Brian Benson, uh, although he goes by Brian. And the name of the book is Habits for Success. Can you share with our listeners how they can connect with you online? Yeah, thanks. Uh, my website is just gbrianbenson.com. There's no period after the G. It's just G Brian Benson. And then you can find the new book, Habits for Success, at, um, on Amazon via the link habitsforsuccessbook.com. Habitsforsuccessbook.com. Yep. Okay, great. And yeah. uh, it sounds like you've got some book signings coming up. Are, are the events posted on your website? They are. I'm, I'm in the process. Um, I, I'm real, I love my website, but I'm in the process of putting something on the homepage that uh, has kind of an event calendar. It's not up yet, so they are not. Okay. Okay, well, stay but, tuned, folks. Yes. Yeah, but but I will be, I think, in <clears throat> Santa Clarita, if anybody's down here in the L.A. area, um, at the end of um, April at the Open Book um, Bookstore in Santa Clarita, and I'll be at Warwick in San Diego, or it's in, in El, La, La Jolla, El Jolla, <laughs> La Jolla, uh-huh. um, at the end of May. Okay, great. Yeah, we have listeners from all over the world, so I'm sure there's some down in California, too. Uh, yeah, that would be awesome to say hi. You know, um, I, I know throughout your book you've got some poetry as well, and you've been invited to present some of this. Can you share with our listeners um, a, a poem that you'd like to read? Sure, sure, sure. Um, okay, this is one. This is one of my favorites, and it, it's called "Your Voice." Your voice creates a ripple over land and well beyond. Truthful words vibrate lifted to create a loving bond. Your voice can be your freedom or your voice can be your hell. Mm -hmm. Mindful heed and word and thought send forth love and light to gel. Your voice can give permission to another seeking truth. Authentic, centered living taps into eternal youth. Your voice can be the difference to set a young child free. Loving words to encourage a model for them to be. Your voice is your ready key to unlock your truthful worth. Spoken pure, life now renewed, energized, loving, rebirth. Your voice gives inspiration to those afraid to speak. Reassuring tones shared true helps others gain their peace. Your voice is a kindred link when spoken face to face. True connection, eyes unite, before texting took its place. 
Mm. Your voice is your true freedom when it's spoken from the heart. Intuition's guiding path helps you play your destined part. And your voice is fundamental for all life and love to flow. Empowered, valued, perfect. Painting a worldly glow. Beautiful. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah. And we use our voice in various ways, don't we? Mm, so many different written, ways. Written word through actions. It's it's speaking who we are and our truth. That's yeah. That's yeah. that's profound. No, yeah, thank you. I mean, I, it, looking back, I mean, all these that I've written, all these poems. Um, yeah, they're for me first and foremost. And as I was going through my own process and, and trying to convince myself that, you know what I mean, that. Uh, that it was safe to do that, and mm-hmm. that, that I was oh, worthy to do that, and, and you name it. But, yeah. yeah, and we often teach either what we've struggled to learn or what we're in the process of learning, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. <laughs> so if so true. if somebody is feeling a sense of unease, a feeling that they want to shift, let's say their career, for instance, because I know that mm-hmm. you know that's that's part of your focus in your book is your career path. Um, how, how do they allow that to emerge? How do they, how do they, how do they choose that? Well, that's interesting. <clears throat> In some ways, I think it almost chooses you. Mm, yeah. And when it really chooses you, like I was, it chose me, <clears throat> even though I didn't quite know what it was at the time, I just, I had to move in that direction. Uh-huh. Um, you know, so if, if you're, if someone's at a place that they're not feeling, you know, fulfilled at, or they're feeling called to do something else, I mean, please, you know, uh, look, look, look more closely into that and, you know, step into it. You know, I understand you may not be able to quit what you're doing at the time and that's fine. Cause you know, you need to maybe do something on the side a little bit to kind of, to get it going before you can potentially make that switch. But, but I think it's your intuition, you know, speaking to you and kind of laying out, you know, some, I, I just, for me, you know, the intuition is just basically God, the universe, spirit, whatever you want to call it, kind of showing us what is going to really actually be, be to our benefit and what's going to bring us happiness and fulfillment and growth, mm-hmm. you know? I, um, so, so, yeah. I know that there are a lot of people who, when they go to make a change like that, they'll have folks in their lives who will say, you know, you could never earn money doing that, or that's mm-hmm. crazy. You need to be more responsible. Um, why is it important that we connect with people who are, you know, more supportive? Well, I, I think that that is a great point right there. I mean, a lot of times when we get people's advice like that, it's just their fears coming out or their maybe not wanting you to leave them because they're afraid oh. to step into their, their power as well. Yes. And so, um, you know, it's so important to be around other people that want to further themselves and grow and, and you know, expand who they are. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of head, move in that direction together right. rather than potentially be held back by someone who's afraid to do that. Yeah. And in like 30 seconds or less, why is it yeah. important that we clean up our disagreements? Oh, Oh, my gosh. Um, that's a great question. There's so many reasons why. I mean, I think it just, it can, it releases the weight. It releases the pain. It releases a lot of things, whether it's just forgiving someone. And I realize there's a lot of things that have happened that, that can be very painful mm-hmm. that aren't easily forgiven. But, but just like a normal disagreement or something as well, you know, just reach out, try to clean it up so you can just kind of move forward and move on from it rather than have it kind of just gnaw at you. Uh-huh. And... Yeah. And how do we need to clean it up within ourselves? Well, we need to forgive ourselves a lot, too. I mean, I know I've definitely had to do that. I mean, mm-hmm. My son, for example, we were talking about earlier. Yeah. You know, I needed, I needed to forgive myself for, you know, just, I mean, not that anything wrong happened, but for, for the route that I took and, and the path that happened, and, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, yeah. 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 I, I get it's that. so important to forgive ourselves and so again, love it, ourselves. Um, it's gbrianbenson.com and the book is called Habits for Success or habitsforsuccessbook.com to, to follow the link. Um, Brian, I've enjoyed having you on today. Thank you for following your intuition and also for showing up here on the show. 
No, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Christine. It was it was a lot of fun. And um, I want to thank you for joining us here today. Uh, again, if you want to listen to some of the replays of this show, go to christineapchurch.com. And you can also find some other goodies there, including what it is I offer and plenty of blogs. Thanks again for joining us here today. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you'd like to empower yourself to step further into your vibration of change, please visit my website at christineupchurch.com where you can learn more about my insights, upcoming events, and private sessions. The views expressed.